Okay, so as you guys know, today we'll be talking about uh, algorithms. Last week we have talked about uh, one uh, algorithm type, which is uh, the flooding algorithm. Today we'll be talking about more types of algorithm, more specifically in the topic of sorting and searching. I think it's um, searching and sorting algorithms are very important, whether it is for your coding, for problem solving, for interviews, for anything, because it teaches you how to actually solve problems in an effective and efficient way. So for today's tutorial, we will continue the materials from lecture, where in lecture will be, you guys have learned about uh, selection sort, merge sort, and binary search. And today's uh, tutorial, we'll be talking about three more algorithms, the bubble sort, the a, a further continuation of binary search and lastly one more magic sorting algorithm okay so for today i think what's important to emphasize to emphasize is the main focus of today's tutorial today's tutorial's main focus is not to learn the code of a particular algorithm but more of this pseudo code of a particular algorithm because when we talk about algorithms you guys are expected to understand the step-by-step -step method and are able to translate the step-by-step -step method to any code regardless of the language so if i you can do bubble sort in python java c so it's more important for you guys to actually understand how the algorithm actually runs rather than actually understanding how the code works. Because once you guys understand how the algorithm runs, it's easier to actually code from it. Okay, because I'm already pretty sure that you guys are already pretty uh, solid in actually trying to uh, convert your pseudo code to actual code. So let's just learn about how we actually run the algorithm in terms of pseudo code. Okay. All right. So um, today's tutorial has three parts, I think. Yes, it has three parts. We'll be talking about bubble sort. And then uh, we will be talking about bisection method. And lastly, we'll be talking about one more sorting method. Okay. So for uh, bubble search, a bubble sort, it will be like you will be given a list of n numbers. Uh, the algorithm goes like this. Lah. If we find out, uh, we go in pairs. So we take two numbers at, at a time. And then basically we swap them if the numbers are not in order. If they are equal, just let it be. Okay. So to understand, uh, uh, I'll just visualize it here. So I'll just create a random uh, list of numbers and then I'll just press sort. So if you can see the algorithm is on the right, the uh, bottom right, corner of your screen. So see if you can see right, it will keep on taking two two um, numbers at a time. And then we'll swap them. And then once it arrives at the end, uh, we'll just keep on running, repeating the process over and over again. So the process kind of somewhat, you know, pushes the biggest number to the end for every pass. Yeah, like one go is considered one pass. So it will keep on repeating the process over and over again. Now, when you see this, right, try to think of how the code works.
Okay, uh, we're done with the bubble sort. I hope uh, you guys now understand how it works. So now what uh, the assignment uh, ask is like we define both bubble and bubble sort. Let's just start with bubble sort first. So basically, um, sorry. We can keep on bubble sorting it. By the number of item in the list. Okay. And once it's sorted, uh, you just simply return the list. Now, um, now let's define bubble. As you can see here, if the left element is greater than the right element, if the left element is greater than the right element, then you swap it. If not, you keep it. Okay. So, If list i minus one is greater than list i, then what I want to do is I swap them. Now, once I'm done, uh, going through one past, I'll simply return the list. Okay, so let's just try. Um, let's just try, um, say I have these. Okay, I'm not so sure whether this works, but say we have these numbers. Okay. okay, that's pretty bad. So let's just reorganize them. Okay, so let's try. Okay, it doesn't show up anything. Let me just print it first. Ah, it is finally sorted. Okay. Uh, okay. So that's uh, an example of bubble uh, sort where you just keep on bubbling one by one. Let me try to see. Yeah. So, okay. So that's the question. That's the final question. Uh, that's the demo for bubble sort. Uh, are there any questions? Okay, because if you guys don't have any questions, then I have questions. Uh, where is it? Okay, so the question is like, um, um, just type it in your chat and it's okay. So the question is like, do you really need to apply so many times and when can we end? 
And do you guys need to do it for the whole list? Any answers? Just, just type in lah your thoughts in the chat. Anyone really like? Okay, let's just start with the first question. Lah. Like, do you guys really need to apply it? When can we actually end the iteration? And do you guys need to do it for the whole list? I think we can try to observe it one more time, maybe. Okay, let's just try to see it one more time and see whether uh, you guys learn something or not. Can I say like after after the end row, I can actually don't need to run through the last n numbers because the last n numbers are already the largest. Yes. Okay. Uh. Yep. Yeah, correct. You technically, if you can see right, the yellow ones are are, are not uh being sorted again. Yeah, so I yeah, technically you can, don't can reduce by two uh, the time the uh, n square mm. over two instead of n square. Um, no, technically it's still n square. It is technically still n square. I mean, um, if you okay, don't run so, through the list all the time, because it would be a like somewhat a triangle uh. It's still n square, but at least it is faster. So yeah, I think that's the first thing that we can do. Um, so instead of bubbling the entire long list, we can bubble just like the first n so say this is i so if you want to take the last n item so like let's just do like minus i and then here is until minus i till the end Okay. In this way, the I think it still should work. Oh no. Okay. So it's like technically you cannot see the time difference, but it will actually make a difference once your uh your list gets so big. So yeah, in this case, what you want to do is just like take the first for every iteration, you simply remove the last part and just bubble what is needed. So that's the first thing that we can make it more efficient, that we don't have to really sort the entire list. We can keep on making it shorter. There's another thing that we can do, is that is is that if you can if you see here actually there's this black swapped, false. And then if a swap happens, swap becomes true. So basically, what happens here is that uh if if right uh. A swap happens, a swap happens in the thing, right? Um, then I'll continue on swapping. I need to do another pass of bubble swap. But then, like, if I go for one pass, right, and nothing is sorted, it means that it implicitly says that, oh, the list is already sorted. Hence, if the list is already sorted, then I do not need to go through another bubble sort. So with this, like, um, with this code, right, the implementation might slightly be harder. 
So perhaps like um, it's easier if we can combine them into one big code. So say we have an improved bubble sort. So um, swap true. Let's just start with a swap true. While well, it is swapped, um, we'll now set swap to false because we're starting a new tradition for i in range and I'll just copy paste the entire part here okay and then now we if, a, if there's a, two numbers that are not in the right position then we'll just swap them then because there's a swap happens, we know that it means that the list is not in order. So we will just set swap to true, meaning that they we need to do, go for another pass of swap of bubble sort. And then basically uh once it's done, I simply just return the list. For immutability, what you can do is uh you can just uh, do a shallow copy of the list. Try the improved bubble sort. So yeah, it works as well. It's just that perhaps like here in this case, like the time, you cannot really see how the time improves. Um, but then this uh, intuitively, you guys know that this is more efficient as it doesn't really swap the entire list and um, yeah, it doesn't really swap the entire list and oh wait, we haven't actually implemented this feature where we just want to swap till the very last end. Uh, okay, maybe Excuse, let's, let's try. So um, we want to change this, then I think here we want to change, instead of going through everything, we want to like go through to the end, but then like only until like the index where we haven't sorted yet. So let's just have a counter. And basically we'll deduct this by the counter. And for every iteration, at the counter by one. Hence, I, 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 for every bubble sort, uh, for every bubble sort, um, the index right will start on decreasing one by one from the right. So it will uh, remove this, 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 and keep on removing until the end. No matter how much we cut down the list, the time is still O n square. Uh, yeah, it is the ON square, but then the ON square is, is uh, much, much better because um, in our initial bubble sort, right, um, the ON square is like this. This is the N square. This is the number of passes and this is the number of items in the list. While in our new improved code, it is more of a triangle where this is the number of items in our list. Uh, this is the len. Oh my God, it's so bad. And this is the number of bubble sorts, the number of bubbles. So it's much uh, smaller la, and it sh technically should be faster. It, it 
theoretically cuts the time by half. But then, yeah, like, in terms of time complexity, we'll still call it as n square because we remove constants and co uh, constants and coefficients, if that makes sense. Okay, so yeah, that's about uh, bubble sort. Damn it. So there's another even crazier form of sort. Um, which is the Bogo sort. Bogo sort is even crazier. Like basically, um, technically it works, but then like, why would you even use Bogo sort? So we, the idea of Bogo sort is uh, anyhow shuffle the list and check whether it's sorted or not. If it's not sorted, then repeat. Else, uh, and end it. And technically, this is the the worst possible ways of sorting, and this is a nightmare, lah. So, yeah, I'm not gonna. I mean, it's just two slides, lah, just for fun. But then this is another form of sorting. So. For the rest of the sorting algorithm, you guys can actually go to Visual Go. Um, yes, indeed, in we won't be covering all the sorting algorithm in CS 1010E. In fact, this is uh, CS 2040 stuff, data structures and algorithms. You guys can learn about the other forms of sorting, which is very interesting. Like, I think you guys talk about selection sort in class when you try to sort uh, uh, playing cards. There's insertion sort, there's merge sort, there's even quick sort, there's random quick sort, there's count sort, counting sort. And I think we'll be using this in PE. Uh, I highly doubt so. I think the why we learn about sorting algorithms is more of to improve our problem solving skills. Because I'm not so sure why, but in my personal experience, when I do this, it actually improves my problem solving skills. So I think this sorting is interesting. Counting sort is so basically if you have an array of uh, items that repeats a lot, what you want to do is in fact, you want to count them. You want to count how many items in each number for each number. So in this case, we count, count, count. After we finish counting, then we just simply like go through one by one and yeah, create it. So if you guys can guess, the data structure should be, this particular data structure would be a dictionary where you go through the list one by one and then you count the items one by one and put it inside a dictionary. And once you're done, you iterate through your dictionary and create this whole new list, okay? This one is a, a very, very efficient code, but then uh, it's very dangerous lah, in a sense that um, if the, the items in the list is mostly unique, then like, you know, the dictionary will explode lah and it will be hard to sort. This is only efficient when the number of uh, unique items inside the list is very small. And there's a lot of repeated items. If not, it's gonna be a huge nightmare. So just explore around. I think I've sent the link in the Telegram group for you guys to explore. Okay, are there any questions? If there are no questions, maybe a thumbs up so I can move forward. Kind of, uh, what kind of sort is actually under the content of CS1010? Is it only insertion, bubble, and selection? Okay, I'm gonna be on. I'm gonna be honest, lah. Sorting usually does not come out during PE. Usually during PE, you guys can use the items inbuilt sorting function. How about merge? Uh, how about exam? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, during exam. Um, mm, usually during exam, uh, hmm, 
usually during I think it's safe to say uh, the things that will come out is the things that are only covered in tutorial and lecture. I do not think they'll go deep. Even if they go deep, they usually may provide the algorithm in your paper so that they'll actually mention, okay, this is bubble sort, this is the algorithm, and then you analyze from the given code. So they won't like just like give you a question and won't give you the code. I don't think they will actually ask about time complexity in CS1030. They'll just have it mention it, but they won't actually cover it. Time complexity is uh Tampan S material. Oh yeah, by the way, will they cover the exception and all this in P because you say all, all content, right? But like try and exception is only next week material, right? Okay. Do they straight away teach next week and test us for next, uh, okay. next Saturday? Usually, usually you won't use exception in practical exam because in practical exam, what we want you guys to do is to write a uh, foolproof code so your code will not break. Lah. Um, so I very, very highly doubt it will show up in PE. I've never seen an uh, exception being, test being used in PE because like, yeah, like exception is you use exception on the argument that uh, your code will break, hence you need exception, which is good if you are actually working. Because like when you are working and you are coding in work, oftentimes your code will break. But in uh, in an in close in a closed environment like PE, your code will not break lah. The question will be easy to do. It will be tested in finals though. So yeah, these are the time complexity if you guys are very interested to learn. Time complexities are interesting to learn because you get to understand like um, what, uh, like not all sorts are made equal. Some sorts are faster, some sorts are slower. Hence, uh, you kind of want to pick a sort that is actually fastest depending on your case, okay? So yeah, uh, I think I'll just move on. I'll go to the next part, which is a uh, searching. So the next part is the bisection method. Bisection method is actually a further iteration of the binary of binary search. Oh, it does. So it's just um, a root finding method lah that re repeatedly bisects an interval and then selects a sub interval which the root must lie for further processing. So given two function, a function fx, you want to find the value of x when fx is zero. So if you can see the animation here, we keep on bisecting the graph until we find a point where the value of x, the value of fx is zero or close to zero. Now the requirement for this uh, algorithm to work is that um, both starting and end point should be in different, uh, it should be in, should be, one should be above zero and one should be below zero. Because if it's not, if it's not one above zero and one below zero, it will just, it cannot find the point. La. One above zero and one below zero also says that it means that somewhere in between, right? Somewhere in between, the line should have crossed the line zero because you know the line travels from above zero to below zero or from below zero to above zero. Okay, so we have an algorithm here. So we compute the value of x. We initially compute the value of x, which is the middle point between a and b. And then if the value of x is not zero, right, if it's not zero, then we evaluate if the value of x is actually below zero, then, uh, okay, it's really hard to say. If the value of x is below zero, then the solution must lie from x to a. If, see, if f a is the point above zero, x to a, so we'll set b to x x. Now, if fx is above zero, meaning that um, um, I think I'll just show you an example. 
it's it's easier to show by an example. So in this case, we have this particular graph. Okay, and the middle point is right here. Meaning that uh, this middle point above right here is actually above zero. So that we know that uh, the uh, cutting point right should be between X and the point under zero. So we'll take this point and the point under zero, which is this particular point. Yeah. Uh, let me just keep it moving on. Okay, so if this with this point, this particular point over here. So with that, uh, we'll try to make it smaller. Right, we'll cut it, uh, we'll remove this part. You know, the bisection method will take a subset and then we repeat the process. We add these two axes up and then we half them up and we average them, which results in minus two and we calculate the value of minus two. Now, because this is a point that is above zero, uh, then we'll, we'll take this point with a point that is below zero. And between these two points, the points that are below zero is actually this particular point, minus 20. So we'll take this and this. And then we repeat the process. Now, pay attention here. You see that here, the point somewhat crosses zero. And now the, the middle point is negative. Because it's negative, then we want to take the point that is above zero, which is this particular point. Hence, we can remove this part off. And, uh, and it will keep on doing that until it converges. So you get the idea now. Nah? What you want to do is just like keep on cutting to left and right, left and right, left and right. And you want to make sure that you, the parts that you cut is the right part. And you know it's right. If, if it's x below 0, then you remove the... You want to replace the a, a point below x. You want the new x to be the new value of the x which is below zero. If it's above zero, you want the new x to replace the old x where the x is above zero. Okay. So with that algorithm in mind, try to implement bisection start and f to solve the problem. Okay. So try to uh, implement this. Um, Okay, maybe for this, I'll try to break you guys into different breakout rooms. Uh, let me just create a code share first. Okay. Okay. Now, once uh, <clears throat> now I'll break you guys into several breakout rooms. Okay. Um, try to implement the bisection method, and if you guys are done, just feel free to send it to code share. Please give comment of which, uh, which breakout room you are from in the code share, so I know uh, whose code this is. All right. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, okay, I think some of you did not manage to finish, but some rooms did. So let's just go through them. I mean, um, since this is an algorithm, we expect that the answer should be quite similar. La. Should be quite, quite similar. But then if not, then yeah, GG. Um, Okay, so let's just try to see. Um, I'll just explain lah. Okay, 
uh, thanks for uh, room five and room six. Uh, so that's uh, Pingsen, Jun Tian, uh, Mel Melvin, and Yongcheng. Yeah. So I think uh, it's pretty interesting. Okay, so uh, this one is interesting. So again, we start with a check. You need to check that uh, both uh, start and end are on different signs above zero and below zero. So it does a multiplication. And if the multiplication sign is positive, meaning like both are positive or both are negative, then like the curve does not have a sign. This is not exactly true, but this is a better way. Because uh, um, technically, if you have, uh, oof, holy sh that's bad. You have a quadratic equation and then your points are here and here, then technically you kind of still have a root to find, but then this is not certain. Lah. So uh, to prevent those uncertainty, we'll just consider that we won't do that. Okay. Then, uh, oh, reverse equals to false. If start is greater than zero, then reverse is true. So uh, you find the middle point and If it's if the value of the middle point is less than the error margin, because technically, like we cannot really find uh, absolute zero. So, like if it's like say within the uh, acceptability point, say like error or epsilon is is what I don't know uh, zero point zero 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 one, depending on the level of accuracy you want, then you return it the point, if not, then you make sure that uh, you just repeat bisection. You keep on bisecting it over and over again. I think this one is also similar. As long as it's within the margin of error, then you just do a recursive call. Interesting that you guys are now do you working with recursion and not doing iteration. Okay. Uh, right. So it's very similar. Room six is very similar with room five, just a lot of modification in terms of structure. Okay, so thanks a lot, guys, uh, for coming up with the, the code. So I hope the others can learn as well from the code. Uh, for this one, right, yes, correct, like this won't show up in PE, but you kind of understand, right, the logic that you guys put into this question right now those kinds those same level of logic might actually be needed for PE so for those of you who those rooms that haven't done this yet I do strongly encourage you guys to actually attempt of doing this okay so are there any questions regarding bisection If there are no more questions, then let's move on to the final part of this, this week's tutorial. Oh, it's quite fast. Okay, so, uh, yeah. So there's a new, there's a different sort method. Uh, uh, so this is the new sort method is that um, given a list of n numbers, um, we pick any element of the list, say x, and then for the rest of the element in list, we'll separate them into two different separate lists. One list A contains all the elements smaller than x and list B, uh, otherwise list B, which means that list B is all elements that is greater than x. Um, this is called partitioning. So for example, um, given that we have this particular list, 
Right. Uh, we wanna partition it as, so such as the numbers that are great, less than four is in list A, and numbers that are greater than four is in list B. Okay. So let's try that. So def partition list and say n pretty easy if n so we have list a and list b both are empty lists. If n for for i in list, if i is greater less than n, uh, we append i to list a. Else, we append it to list b. I mean, if you guys really want to write it in style, you guys can actually use filter. Remember the filter that we learned in class? So like this A will be this filter lambda x, x less than n. This. Then list B means like it's the other way around. Not, yeah, not X smaller than N. So yeah, both, it's up to you. Um, in this case, maybe I prefer this one because in this one means that I need to go through the list only once. This one, I need to go through the list twice. So it's, you know, it's not significant. It's significant slash not significant. Lah. Regardless of your choice, both are okay. Now we've done with the partition. Now here's the thing that the profs would call magic. Lah. So that um, if we output, uh, if we, uh, we can actually uh, output the list as this way. Lah. List A, X, is B, meaning that everything that is Smaller than x, I put in the left. Anything that's greater than x, I put on the left on the right side. Right, but then if you keep on repeating the process over and over again, right? You keep on repeating. Eh, if you keep on partitioning the list A, and keep on partitioning on list B, right? Um, eventually you make 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 this list sorted. So yeah, um, if you can see, if not list, return list, but if it's, you know, it means if it's not an empty, if it's an empty list, then just return this. But then if it's not empty, then we partition it. And then we wanna uh, do some sorting of uh, list A, we wanna do some more sorting on list B, then we return this. So can anyone tell me what kind of what kind of sort is this? What is the name of this particular sort sorting method? Or partition sort. Uh, yes, this is called the partition sort, if I recall correctly. So yeah, I forgot. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is either the partition sort of the, the some people would call it the pivot sort as well. The same as quick sort, I think. Yeah, I think I think it's quick sort. Yeah. So, oh yeah, yeah, it's quick sort actually. So in this case, what you want to do is just like you know partitioning the list, and after you 
you pick a number and then like you partition it and then you sort it, keep on doing it. And eventually it will be sorted on its own. Um, yeah, I really have nothing else to say. So this is a quick sort. So what do we learn today is basically there are a lot of types of sorting and you, it's good to learn everything. There's really like, if you guys ask like, oh, how do I come up with all these sort, different sorting methods? There's no way. The only way is just to learn all the possible sorting methods because sorting methods are somewhat quite well defined already. So you cannot like be creative and come up with something new. What you can be creative about is sometimes you, uh, what you can be creative about is picking the right sort for the right problem. And sometimes you kind of mix some of the sorting, although it's very rare. So yeah, go have a look. Uh, the magic sorting that you guys just learned is uh, called quick sort. Yeah, I kind of forgot. What I somehow remember it as partition sort. But yeah, it's quick sort. Okay, so yeah, I know today's lesson is slightly boring. It's just like uh, just learning about new things. But tr truly, like there's a lot of things to learn about sorting and searching. That's why like today's tutorial is more of a lecturish style. So yeah, uh, that's the end of today's tutorial. Um, just a quick administrative notes. The PE1 results are out. So I know some of you have texted me and I haven't gotten back to you guys because I was quite tired yesterday, quite frankly, quite tired. So I'll try to get back to you by today. Um, just try to text me again if I forgot. Um, if, are there any questions regarding the tutorial materials today? If there are no questions, can you just like press yes on the participants, men participants uh, menu? If you have any question, then perhaps just uh, press no and yeah. So I know if you guys got questions. Okay, I think 10, 10 people uh, pressed yes. So I guess uh, that's good. So I guess we have come to the end of today's tutorial. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, maybe come for next week. Next week is our should be our last tutorial. And I really, really do look forward to our last tutorial. Uh, I think next week we'll be discussing about assignment seven. Okay. So yeah, uh, thanks for coming. And if you have no more questions, feel free to leave. Thanks, guys. Have a nice day.